Super Smash for 64 was going to turn into a huge wide phenomenon that had many games that spawned different consoles. Well, obviously I didn't. I wasn't even born when the game came out. But, I will say that, honestly, Smash has a ridiculous roster for its time. Especially with Smash Ultimate having over over 80, almost 90 characters in Smash today. Like, it's unreal, right? With over 100 music tracks, technically endless spirits, 1,512 just to be exact. And just so much you have to do just to 100% the game. Let me tell you, this game ain't no joke. But I thought, why don't we kind of look at the future? What's next after Smash Bros. Ultimate? That's a good question, and because of the fact that we don't know what's even coming after the Switch, means that we're probably not going to get another Smash game for a good while. Well, anyways, for this video, it's technically going to be a series of parts. Basically predicting slash kind of my personal picks for Smash characters. We're going to be starting with, technically, series that are already represented in Smash getting new fighters. So, basically, we're going to go from the N64, starting with the Mario series, and ending at Melee with Fire Emblem. Okay, so, a few rules before getting into this. Uh, number one, I'm not going to be picking characters who could technically be Echo Fighters, so no, uh, no Funky Kong in this video. I plan on making a totally separate video talking about Echo Fighters I want to see in Smash, just not this video. It's going to basically be original characters who won't be clones. With that also being said, I am only going to be doing what Smash Ultimate considers as a series. So, no Dr. Mario or anything of the sort. So, Yoshi and WarioWare will be mentioned as a series in this video and not like a part of the Mario series. Also, with that being said, uh, I made a specific rule that the characters I have to talk about have to have more than two games it can't have i mean it can't have less than two games uh so basically uh rob and duck hunt aren't going to be talked about in this video i mean in these videos and mr game and watch also won't be talked about either if he's going to get his own character because there's not really much you can say other than mrs game and watch or the octopus and also with that being said I plan on going over stages and such. I won't be talking about returning stages because I could do that in its own video as well. So, just letting you all know that. And there will be a part with a certain character that will be coming up in the Wii U video. So, this video I'm only covering characters like the series that, were, that started on the N64 and to Melee. So, that would be only Fire Emblem. And next we'll go over Brawl and then Wii U, which Wii U will be one of the longest videos of the series. So with that all being said, please understand the rules and let's just get right into it. Different direction. Alright, so the first character that we're going to talk about is for the Mario series. Now, a lot of people would say Waluigi here deserves to be in Smash, but honestly, although I think it'd be funny and the character would be pretty interesting, I'm actually going to say that Captain Toad deserves to be in it way more than Waluigi. Now, why do I say that? I feel like Captain Toad has way more of a moveset, and not only that, he could also just be regular Toad. He doesn't have to be strictly Captain Toad, you know what I mean? And it's like it just work way better if it was Captain Toad or just a normal Toad over Waluigi because Toad has been in so many Mario games, it's unreal. So yeah, for my pick, Toad is definitely going to be the top dog in this part.
Okay, so for Donkey Kong Country, I kind of had way more of an issue with who could work as a new character. And at the end of the day, I think it's still going to be Dixie Kong for me. I think that she can play just different enough that she won't be similar to Diddy Kong. Now, you can obviously make an argument and say that, oh, well, she would still play like Diddy Kong, or at least feel the same as Diddy Kong. But I'm actually going to counter that and say that she doesn't use any weapons, but instead uses her hair kind of like a whip, like Shantae in her games. So, yeah, I'm still going to say Dixie Kong for this. And if you don't agree, I obviously kind of understand. So for The Legend of Zelda, I'm just going to say Terra. Because I don't think we have a whole lot of Legend of Zelda Toon Link games reference other than Toon Link himself and his Wind Waker stage. There are so many other great Legend of Zelda games with the Toon Link style. Minish Cap, uh, Four Swords Adventure, Spirit Tracks, Phantom Hourglass. I'm just saying, why not? Just throw in Terra. She's basically the Legend of Zelda of that game. I mean, the Zelda of that game, and that Sheik's Zelda. So, you know, maybe we could just have that work out very well, right? And also, I think it'd just be cool to have a pirate. The Metroid series technically gets a good roundup of characters in Smash. But for this one, I'm just going to say Adam. I don't think there's really a need for Adam as a new Smash character as much as, say, The Legend of Zelda needs more Smash characters. As Metroid basically has its main guy in Smash. So instead of sitting here and saying that, oh, yes, definitely more Metroid reps, I think we actually got enough Metroid reps. Not because I don't want any more, but just because we're kind of running out of characters and really only Adam can work. Now we're going to go over the Yoshi series. Yes, I know, a very mainstay character series. So, who I decided to pick for this was the uh, Kamek, aka Magic Koopa, which a lot of people will say, yes, it's from the Mario series, but he really plays way more of a role in the Yoshi series, as he's kind of one of the biggest characters of it. Of course, you can also say Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi, but honestly, I think for a new Yoshi character, why not have Kamek? I mean, Kamek's technically the main villain aside Bowser Jr. I just think it makes the most sense. So for the Kirby franchise, I'm just going to say Bandana Waddle Dee because that's the one that most people would pick. And honestly, I think it works because, I mean, in Kirby's Dream Land, which is getting a deluxe version, I believe, uh, that's one of the party members. And it, it just kind of works. It kind of fills up the trio or the uh, quartet. What the heck am I even talking about? Anyways, I just think Bandana Waddle Dee would just work. So for the Star Fox series, I really can't say too much. I mean, basically, I could say just one of Team Fox's members, like Pepe or Slippy. But I'm just going to say, why not just have more of the wolf tribe together? Or the wolf pack, the wolf pack together? I just think that would work because instead of, well, another Star Fox team member, or Team Star Fox whatever member, Let's throw in some more bad guys. I was going to say Andros, but honestly, obviously, Andros doesn't work. Andros is extremely huge, like, I think even bigger than Ridley at this point. And I don't see a potential move set with Andros. I think he could just stay as an assist trophy. talking about the Pokemon franchise and to be dead honest with you 
we're just gonna say Team Rocket. Now, why am I saying Team Rocket? We need more Pokemon trainers, and I don't think the rival, honestly, would be that cool. Because, I mean, what would they really call him? Rival? Really? Then again, this is the same game that has Hero and Pokemon Trainer as names. Huh. Okay, just to avoid spoilers here, I'm just going to say it's Flint from Other 3. It's Flint from Other 3. Now we're going to talk about the F-Zero franchise. F-Zero doesn't have a whole lot of games like the formers, but we can still talk about certain characters. And the one I picked was obviously Samurai Goro because a lot of people actually really want him. And I don't see why not. I mean, he could use his sword in some cool ways, kind of make him more of a bigger sword fighter, make him a little bit more slower, kind of like Sephiroth is, but he hits a tiny bit harder than Sephiroth. I can just imagine that working well, and maybe his final smash could kind of be like Captain Falcon, except he goes way faster, and instead of you getting hit, you just get crushed. I don't know, I just really like that idea way more than just the exact same as Captain Falcon's. And now we're going over the game with the most characters, or third most characters, in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, the Fire Emblem series. And of course, I think a lot of people can probably agree with me on this one, but I think Lin from Fire Emblem that we got here in the West, for the first time, should be the main character that we get in Smash. Like, the next character in Smash should be Lin, because Lin was the very first ever Fire Emblem character that we saw in Fire Emblem. I mean, yeah, that has a same character like Roy's in the game, but come on now. We can at least have Lin as she's a very prominent member of Fire Emblem. So why not just throw her in for good measure? I mean, yeah, of course, we could say that the new character from the new Fire Emblem game would be better, but honestly, I prefer if we got Lin. And that's all she wrote. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video, and please give a like and subscribe. I also have to repay all the damage I did to all my video games. And while you're down there, comment down below who you wanted to see joined in Smash from a older series. Thank you all for watching, and remember, I know where you live. Don't let a single one get away!